Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for another exciting ex segment of the Montrose Kia Care campaign. As always, you got a friend at Montrose. Go Montrose.com. We are back at the Kia Cares program. I'm with Mayor John D. Hunter. How are you? It's an honor to sit here and talk with you. Well, it's great to be here today. Anytime we can uh, uh, show the appreciation to our first responders and Kia stepping forward with this program is a very important part of that. This has been a trying 16 months and is continuing on. And our people uh, and the first responders have stuck out there They've done on and above the call of duty, and I appreciate everything that they do. Now you said something that kind of stuck out to me. You said our people, and uh, I think it's important that we, we touch on that a second. This, this does affect our people, and when you say our people, you're talking about our first responders, our citizens. How trying has it been during this whole thing to, to kind of get in the groove of, of taking care of everything? Well, uh, I have a number of hats that I wear. Uh, not only am I the mayor or safety service director in the village, but I'm also president of the Lorain County Mayor's Association. And all of our mayors have been joining together to help the first responders, and which in turn uh, keeps our residents safe. Not only those in Sheffield Village, but those traveling through the village and the other communities. And as long as we do it in a team effort, showing what the Lord has showed us to do, and that's show faith and taking care of each other. That's absolutely amazing. I love it. So we talk about our first responders, and I'm sure you know all of them and, and talk to them. And, and, you know, we appreciate them. How, you know, with, during all of this, with your, you know, journeys talking with them and stuff, how have they been feeling? They, they've got to been, you know, being run down and, and everything else, and they, we're trying to help pick them up. So how have they been? Well, our first responders throughout the county are a great group of people. They've been trained for this type of thing. And they put their all into it because they care about not only Sheffield Village, they care about everybody. And uh, it's been hard for them at time, but they are the type of people that give their all for everybody else. And it's just their job, and they want to do it to the best of their ability. Absolutely. So during the whole horrible pandemic that we were in and everything like that, what is like one thing that, that we think will help pick them up? This Kia Care program is, is you know, designed to, to basically give back to them a little bit. But what's one thing that, that we can, you know, when you're out there seeing the boys in blue and our first responders and stuff, what's one thing we can do as citizens just to kind of, you know, give them a little pick-me-up? I think the biggest thing they can do is to say thank you. It's uh, small words, but it means a lot for these first responders. And first responders are, are our first our paramedics and our firemen that are out there on a job and our policemen, but our people in the service department that are out there taking care of the streets and the storms and the water and those type of things. And a simple thank you sincerely means a lot. Send a message to their department expressing that. I have every month, I have every council meeting, I always am receiving letters from residents, people passing through the community uh, telling me, what special things that that fireman or that policeman or that service person done. And I like that, and I like to express it. And telling them recognizes them for all the extra effort they put in. We have great people on those jobs, and they are, uh, they're serving with their heart, and uh, their heart's in the right place. Show that appreciation by a simple thank you. Uh, we say that to the person that opens the door to us, but a person that just came and rescued us or took care of our issues, they need those thank yous too. Absolutely. So we were talking a little bit off air, and I was able to, 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 get to know you a little bit. You've been mayor for 14 years. Have you ever had anything that, that like, like the pandemic, had to deal with anything like that before? I mean, this had to be one of the most trying times, and it looks like you have done everything you can to prevail and help these people. Has anything ever been this hard before? I think the hardest thing is... Uh, helping people to do things and get ready for this type of thing. And I'm very fortunate to have a chief the caliber of uh, 
Jeff Young in my department, and uh, he has handled things. And uh, uh, Bill Vassalden, my uh, police chief, Ken Cassie, my service director, made preparation uh, for these hard times. And when you're talking about passing levies or you're talking about uh, getting equipment and you don't have to use it, they say, why do we need to do that? Well, it's a preparation that these people did and the people that work for them uh, did to get prepared for that. So it was both the uh, hard, but it was joyous to say that we were prepared. Uh, they took action early. Uh, they were prepared. They were trained. And uh, they wanted to use those skills that they got, and they did. And our people are the best in the nation. Absolutely. It's amazing to hear you know, somebody of your caliber talking about these first responders and these people. They've just done an amazing job all around, and that's what this Kia Care program is we're trying to do. We're trying to give back to these people who do risk their lives. I mean, this, we're, we're in a pandemic. You know, These people do not have to go out there and do what they do, but we are blessed, especially in Lorain County, our community, Sheffield. We are blessed to have these people go out there and care enough. You know, people who've never met any, you know, these uh, fire uh, departments, the police department, they've never met us before, but yet they're there to serve us and protect us. And like you said, a simple thank you goes a long, long way. And I think that's what the Kia Care program is designed to do. We want to go out there and say thank you in a big way, and we're glad to have you a part of it. Well, I'll tell you, Kia stepped forward here, and they've been a good corporate citizen to Sheffield Village on a lot of projects, whether it be for the school, the Historic Society, or all of our uh, programs, our churches. Uh, the Lions Club, and uh, they've been here to help along. So when Kia came forward again and said, we want to show appreciation to that, uh, to our first responders, and that they want to use our restaurants in the, in the community was a big part. It shows they care about the whole community and just not this dealership. And I appreciate the leadership at this uh, location. Uh, they've came forth many times to help out and they're always, they were out there for the veterans on the forefront, and now they're out here today uh, working with the uh, first responders. It's a joy to be a part of that and be here today to tell the first responders, this is great. You deserve this and far more. God bless you, and God bless the work that you do in taking care of the people. We never can pay you back for the great job that you do to services. Thank you very much. Well, it's been an honor talking with you. It's been great. To, I, I know you're a busy, busy guy, and you've just even taken the time out here to come out and talk with us a little bit. It means a great deal to everybody, and your words are awesome. So I want to thank you very, very much for coming on, and we'll see you next time. Well, we're looking forward to this, and we're looking forward to uh, uh, having this happen and start right here in Sheffield Village, the heart of Lorraine County. Absolutely. Mayor John D. Hunter, everybody. Back at Kia Cares, I am with the fire chief of Sheffield Village, Jeff Young. How are you? Great. How are you guys today? I'm doing fantastic. So we got this Kia Cares program. We got, uh, you know, we're, we're taking care of our first responders. And we wanted to chat with you because you are our first responder. During this pandemic and everything that's been going on, how have you handled it and how have you told your boys to handle it? Well, it's it's been very stressful because... Normally, firefighting is the only danger we really face, but even the average squad call became dangerous. So we had to take a lot of precautions and do a lot more protective gear for them when they were just going on ambulance calls. Um, but they handled it very well. We, we, we got through the initial part of the pandemic pretty much unscathed, except for one person who became ill, but he didn't get that sick. He, he was in the very first part. But make no mistake about it, it's not over with yet. This, this D variant's a mess, and it, it's coming, and I, I expect trouble again in the fall. So we're, we're already getting ready for that. So you guys are already preparing for what they're going to say could possibly be a second wave. And, and I think that's why the Kia Care programs is, is doing what they're doing, because like you just said, you guys are now having to focus on a second part of that. And we can't thank you enough for what you guys do. I know Kia is, is again, trying to give back in a way that tries to show our appreciation. But a simple thank you, you know, I, I know words mean a lot, but a simple thank you just doesn't seem like enough. So as you guys are, are preparing for the second wave, what are some of the things you guys are thinking about? Making sure that our protective equipment's in stock. We, we need a lot of it. Um, you know, every squad call you go through 
three to four sets of protective gear, and it's disposable. You use it one time and you throw it away. So we're spending a lot of time getting prepared for that. There's a big challenge within the supply chain for this kind of equipment from the first part of the pandemic. So it's a struggle, and it's something that we, we luckily we concentrated on it before the initial pandemic. We're always preparing for this sort of episode. There, there's always something that comes along every three to five years. It, it's a, a mini pandemic, but this is the worst certainly we've ever seen. And we were pretty well prepared for it, but we, we, we can't rest on our laurels. We have to keep working at it, keep up on the research. We don't watch the media to get our information. We get our stuff from science because, because we can't speculate. We gotta be, make sure we're doing it right. Sure. One one of the things that uh, that I think I want to touch on for a second is you guys are, are battling this pandemic on the front lines. I mean, you guys are, are risking your lives literally for people you've never met before in your entire life. And I think that's what makes, uh, you know, the first responder so special is that it takes something to be a first responder. Not everybody can do it because you got to have it. You know, you got to actually care about people. One thing I, I you know, I want to know is when you guys are out and about, what's something, uh, you know, the normal citizen can do just to give you guys a little bit of a morale boost um we generally don't look for stuff like that um generally a thank you or you know say hi or whatever or acknowledge you know that we're around it's good enough for them we we really don't expect much or, or it, it's it's nice to be recognized and acknowledged but it, it's not something we focus on we, we just kind of try to stay within our zone and just doing our job and not worrying about stuff like that well, one of, you know, and, and the fact that you guys are saying you guys are so selfless, that's the thing. And, and, and the fact that you guys don't expect that, I think that's what this program is trying to do. We're trying to change that. We want you guys to expect that. We want the first responders to go out there and know that the citizens have your back. We do have your back. And we appreciate everything you guys are doing for us. And you are, like I said, you guys are on the front line doing things that I know I couldn't do, doing things and, and you know, protecting family members and, and doing everything you can to make sure that during this pandemic and through this pandemic you're helping us get through it and we want to know uh, you know the, the, the reason this Kia program is happening is because we want to make sure you guys know that as you helped us get through it we're here now to help you get through it and uh, and you know we, we can't appreciate uh, you guys enough we can't thank you guys enough so one thing I want to say before uh, you know before we go is is I know all the citizens here in Lorraine County uh, appreciate what you guys have done and I think that we want to make it the new normal that now when we see fire, when we see EMS, when we see police, when we see all the first responders, the nurses, that we want to make sure you guys know you are appreciated. So Kia and the Kia Cares program is designed to make sure you know that you're not in this fight alone because you made sure we weren't in the fight alone. Well, we deeply appreciate it. Um, this is a really nice program. It's a, it's a really nice concept. Um, I was very pleasantly surprised when I found out about it, and I, I, I was happy to come and talk about it. One other thing that I'd like to mention before we go is within Sheffield Village is a small town. There's four or 5,000 people, but it's a busy place with all this development down on the south end. But the one thing that we have going for us for a long time, as long as I've been here since the 1990s, is a very supportive bunch of residents. We, we, we work very well with our residents, and they're, they're very supportive of us. And they always make sure that we have the right equipment and the right stuff to do our jobs. And it, it's not just the fire department. It, it's, a, it's a combination of our residents. We, we refer to the fire department as it's their fire department. We just work there. And this is the fire department for Sheffield Village. <clears throat> and the people in Sheffield Village do a great job of supporting it. And I think they need to be recognized, too, because if we didn't have their support, we wouldn't be able to function at the high level we do now. That's amazing. And you guys are the real heroes. Not all heroes wear capes. Some guys wear very, very, very crisp white shirts with a badge on it. And you guys have been awesome for us. And again, coming from me personally, I can't thank you enough for how you've handled everything and how you've done everything. It's been an honor to talk to you, and I can't wait to do it again. Thank you. I, I appreciate it, and it was an honor to be with you guys. And again, we appreciate the, uh, the recognition <clears throat> from Kia toward us. We, we really do appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. We'll be back. Welcome back to Kia Cares. We are at Monterose Kia in Sheffield. Who do I have the honor of sitting with today? 
My name is Donna Humphrey, and I am one of the co-founders and currently work in development at Blessing House, a children's crisis care center in Lorain County. That's an amazing, so I want us to take a little bit of time to talk about this because I think what you guys do, what your organization does, is beyond amazing, especially right here in Lorain County. I know we can't thank you enough for what you do. The community can't thank you enough for what you do. So tell me a little bit about how you got started doing this and why. That's, there's always an interesting story behind it. Love interesting stories. So, so it started quite a few years ago when Sister Mary Berrigan, who co-founded Blessing House uh, with, with me, uh, was uh, she and I were both part of a program called Voices for Children. Okay. And we worked in, uh, the, with children who were involved in the court system as child advocates. Wow. And what we were finding too often that there were parents that were losing custody of children simply because they were running into a bad situation, not because they were bad parents. And Sister Mary said, you know, we really need a place where children can go, they can be safe, and their parents can get help so that the children can return safely home to their sure. parents without having to go into the, to the legal system, the court system. Wow. That was the first point, the first question, and really out of that, we just started doing research, started talking to people. Her background was in education, mine was in business, and so uh, others became involved, and we started pursuing this. Um, it took us a couple of years to put it together, but then we opened in April 2005 okay. um, as a licensed agency in the state of Ohio, wow. and... Uh, We've been working on it ever since. It's now 16 and a half years. We just moved into a new building, and we have taken care of 1,600 children since we opened during that time. That's absolutely incredible. I'm a father of four, so I know exactly the, the, the care people have for children. When you care about children and you, you know, you're doing the best you guys can, it's absolutely amazing that you guys are, are putting yourselves out there. Now you guys have volunteers that, that work with you guys too? Our... Uh, our organization or, or our program does not have volunteers working directly with the children. Okay. Um, because of our licensing, because sure. of safety, um, we have to have staff that are trained wow. to be able to provide that, that care. They go through a very extensive screening process, um, training to make sure. Because when children come to us, they've been in some difficult situations. Sure. And so what they're, you're finding is that their behaviors are not always typical. So we really want to make sure that our staff are prepared to give them the care that they need. We do have volunteers that help. We do, you know, with some of the other things, the grounds, the property, office things, sure. fundraising. Um, but we do have limited um, direct care sure. volunteers. And, and the whole idea is to give the children really that safe care. They've got to have a place where they can come in um, because their families have been dealing with domestic violence, with homelessness, with substance abuse. And so they need a place where they can feel safe. That's, sure. that's primary. So, um, yes, we do have some volunteers, but we, right now, all of our direct care is provided by staff that have been trained. So before we kind of get into, you know, what went on the past year and everything, how can the community help you? How can we get involved and, and kind of have your back a little bit? What, what, what can we do to make it a little bit easier on you and your organization? Well, the one thing you're doing right now is, is really important, which is you're helping us tell our story. Um, we've been around for 16 years, um, but we've still had people that will say, I've never heard of Blessing House. Sure. And what's important is for that person who's struggling, you know, and, and has a situation where mom's got to go into the hospital, there's nobody to take care of her children, and so she leaves them with somebody that's a neighbor or somebody she barely knows. Sure. And that person needs to know that we're available to help. So we need to make sure that people are aware of what we do. We're um, a nonprofit. You know, we're not there to, to create problems or separations. Sure. We're there to really help. And so we want to continue to always be able to tell our story and let others know. Um, we are um, an independent nonprofit, so we are dependent on the community for financial support. Sure. And so if, fam if individuals want to make donations or maybe do fundraisers for yeah. us, yeah. that's always appreciated. We do have folks that do collection drives for us. So they'll collect household goods, food, or things like that. 
Um, and we do occasionally need people to come in and do yard work, landscaping, fix things for us. Sure. So there are some volunteer, you know, opportunities that are available. So I think it's a matter of, you know, what kind of gift or talent or time, you know, does somebody have wow. that they would be able to actually offer. And then we just kind of take it from there. Well, that's awesome. And hopefully we'll get some people coming to you in flocks now. We can start doing some different things to, okay. to help raise some awareness about what you guys do. So during the pandemic and everything, how difficult was it for you and your staff to kind of get everything in order and what kind of obstacles did you have to overcome? We switched gears a little bit during the sure. pandemic because we were limited. At the time, we were in our original facility, which was only licensed for 10 children. Wow. And because of the way the building was laid out, we could not only really safely care for about five at a time. Wow. So... Um, what we were doing is just responding to people's calls for help. Sure. Uh, we would get a call from somebody who needed food, who needed diapers, who needed cleaning supplies. So they were not able to get out and get them because of being in isolation, not having transportation. So what we would do is, is provide that for them. Sometimes we just provided somebody to talk to. Sure. Because so many of our families were dealing with isolation. We provided them with technology help because their kids were having a tough time wow. logging in, you know, on their remote learning and things. Sure. So it was, it was a struggle because we were trying to build this new building. We were trying to raise the funds. We're providing support for families. And our own staff, you know, had their own health and, and issues, too. So, you know, you take wow. it day by day. You handle the situations that came up, the problems that came up. And then we kept on working towards that goal of building our new building and expanding our capacity yeah. that would be much safer and easier to work with. And we did it. We moved in in June. Wow. Absolutely incredible. We can't thank you enough for what you do. Your story is amazing and your organization is amazing. Again, I'm a father of four. I couldn't imagine having to go through anything like that. But it's amazing that there is an organization out there that is there to make that transition, to actually care and help, not just, you know, people get a, a, a bad image when, when stuff like that happens, but the Blessing House is there to take that image away and truly care and help for the community. So we want to make sure you know the community has your back, and we want to do everything we can to show our support for you, and we'll do as much as we can to help out the Blessing House. So thank you so much for coming today. We appreciate it so much. It's, it's only because because the community helps us the way just like this that we're able to do what we do because it's truly you, you hear the talk of a, a needing a village to raise a child absolutely and and this is exactly you know what has been happening other agencies churches programs yeah. businesses have all been doing what they can and that enables us to do what we do absolutely well thank you again so much for coming on and, and amazing work what you guys do thank you so much for having us